here we are back at St. Matthew's, Ian. Thank yes. you for hosting us again. Here we're back, second Sunday in January, with Durham Region in Faith. Special thank you to those of you who have contributed financially to this ministry. There are some costs, so we are very grateful that you have uh, continued to support us, especially if you are not a member of a, one of our regular parish families. It, it really has touched our hearts and encouraged us to keep on going. Slogging through this winter. <laughs> yes. But hope is on the horizon. The, va the vaccine is gradually rolling Whichever out. Whichever version we get, of course. Whatever version. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cold going into your arm. If it's I'm not going to think about that degrees. part. Okay. I okay. Just, I'm just happy that I don't know what polio is and mm -hmm. hopefully won't know what COVID-19 is. Yeah. Um, as we prepare to go through with... Um, our service today let's just say thanks for the people we all often overlook sometimes we're simply missing people in our lives we wish we had called them or we have this sort of heaviness that can come especially as we get closer into uh, the midst of July of January be gentle with yourself at this point um, and help uh, help yourself give a, a call to someone if you can or simply you know snuggle up and know that you are loved not just by friends and neighbors but God loves you very much, too. Amen. Amen. Our service to this week begins on page 96 with the Christmas and Epiphany introductory responses. Blessed are you, O Christ, O Son of God. You were born before time began and came into the world to save us. Blessed are you, Son of Righteousness. You shine with the Father's love and illumine the whole universe. Blessed are you, Son of Mary, born a child and shared our humanity. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. Blessed are you, son of David, born to rule. You received gifts from the wise men. Blessed are you, son of man, baptized by John. You saved us from ourselves. Blessed are you, heavenly king, teaching and preaching, healing and comforting. You proclaim the kingdom. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the voices of heaven, we celebrate the coming of our Savior. Let heaven and earth shout their praise. With all the creatures of earth, we sing and dance at his birth. Praise and honor and glory to you, O Lord Most High. And our collect for the day. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, keep your children born of water and the Spirit, faithful to their calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Well, baptism of the Lord. I want you to notice that I am wearing a seasonally appropriate mask for the day. It's got little fishes on it. It was given to me last summer. It was made by one of the fine seamstresses of St. Matthew's. So, uh, just they do good work here, don't they? They do good work here. I am just liturgically appropriate for the a day with my mask. <laughs> liturgically, even if the color is yellow. Um, there, there are little fishes there all are little around. There are little fishes all around. The little fishes have to do with water. water and baptism. Water and, water and baptism. Um, one of the things that I get to delight in, or maybe not, so, not as much this year, 
is I've had to tie my kids' shoes. And, and I'll, it's one thing to, sh to, to tie a kid's shoes, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a couple laces, but when you get into boots... Oh, it's horrible. I still have... Yeah. Oh, oh you, yeah. you're pulling them up and you're saying, get your foot in there. And you're, 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 I mean, at one point, I remember saying to my boy, stand up, and I took the boots off, threw them on the ground, and went, let's try this again. And we out, had to untie them all really loose, and they shoved his foot down there gently ish and then i had to go and pull all those boots to pieces together and do a double knot on it and of course as soon as he got outside his foot came out but that's a different issue but that that act of getting down and tying up his boots now this is now my boy is standing over me as i tie his boots I'm on my yeah, I'm tying much, up the thong of his sandals. If you will. Well, yeah, I am. And that 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 line that we heard in the gospel reading this morning also came up twice last month. So I think I, I'm feeling kind of hammered here. You know, that John says I am unworthy to tie up the thong of Jesus' sandals because you, you think about whose sandals do we tie to, or you know, whose shoes do we tie up? Children's. Um, an elderly person who can't bend down, we help them dress. So that is an act of incredible humility and service, and it's one that um, also requires humility on the part of the person who's having their shoe tied up. If you're an adult, the fact that you can't bend down and tie up your own shoes is... Or you switch to slip-ons. Or you switch to slip-ons. Um, but it's that, a big so deal. That is, that is a thing about humility and service and doing for one another. And for some reason, the gospel writer really, or the lectionary people who collect our readings for us, have it, really given us a one, two, three punch. A, a lot so, of understanding humility and being low. But it's a weird thing. When I'm tying out my son's boots, I am somehow consciously aware of the amount of power and influence I have in this one small act. If I don't tie that boot up tight enough or right, he's going to get cold. And you love your son, so you want to... Oh, I have to. Him. I mean, there are days I wonder, but uh, he's. But I love my boy. I love my girl, I love my wife. And if, if it means getting down and tying up the boots, and that's the small act that's necessary, I'll do so. And the, the amazing thing here is that we're still doing something. And in COVID land, where churches as a whole have restricted our ability to give and do for others as we would like to, as we desire to, it's very difficult, isn't it? To find ways to serve others in manners that are safe for both giver and receiver. Is that what you mean? There, it, it, yes, it's, it's much more difficult to gather and do things in the way that we were freely able to do. And now we're in this weird space where we crave doing that and somehow we can almost feel like our faith is tied to our ability to do and to give. And that can get into a weird space. And that's, that's, where, that's where the baptism comes in because um, Jesus is baptized and then there's a line afterwards and it's the a voice came from heaven and said you are my son the beloved with you i am well pleased and so how does i mean can you imagine that wonderful sense of affirmation don't people spend a lifetime wanting to hear those words from their parents from their you know from their fathers i'm proud of you son except that at this point jesus hasn't done anything except show up with everybody else and follow the crowd so the, uh, with you I am well pleased is a statement not about anything Jesus has done, but simply about who he is. And I think that's the piece that maybe would be helpful for us to hear this year is that we don't have to do anything to be beloved children of our Heavenly Father. Right now we can't, or maybe we actually need someone to tie up our shoes for us, we are still beloved, cherished, tenderly held children of God, who God knows we're in this really weird and difficult place. 
before I put my son to bed, I lay down beside him and I tickle him and I hug him. And I say the same three things to him and I say the same three things to my daughter until she told me to shut up. I say, boy, I love you, I'm proud of you, and I'll do anything I can to protect you. He's seven and he's still not tired of hearing it. That's how I imagine Jesus' baptism, our baptism to be. I love you, I'm proud of you, and I'll do everything I can to protect you, because you're mine. And aren't those words God says to us? Amen. Amen. Baptism and light and all these other wonderful, fun things. It's great having good conversations, Judy. As always. Let's have a uh, let's ha continue our service with um, the Apostles' Creed, the, the affirmation of faith, on page fifty-two. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in recognition of this feast of the baptism of the Lord, we'll continue with the thanksgiving for water, which can be found on page 135. We give thanks for the waters of baptism. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Continuing at the top of page 137. 
To our God belong victory, glory, and power. For right and just are his judgments. Praise our God, all you who serve him. You who fear him, great and small. Let us rejoice and triumph and give him praise. The time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. O God, who brought your people out of slavery with a mighty hand, strengthen us to take our stand with you beside the oppressed of the world, that in the victory of Christ every fetter of body, mind, and spirit may be broken, and the whole human family restored to your image. May sing your praise in joy, freedom, and peace through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and Alleluia. May God the Father, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, continually show us his loving kindness. Amen. May God the Son, victor over sin and death, grant us a share in the joy of his resurrection. Amen. May God the Spirit, giver of light and peace, renew our hearts in his love. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit continue to bless you. Amen and Alleluia. Alleluia.